Joining us now, Ben Rhodes, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama. Ben, this public rift between the White House and Netanyahu is troubling on its face, but now you've got him. The hostage families are challenging him. And now the Supreme Court has come out with an opinion that Orthodox men are, have to be eligible for the draft rather than excused to do their Talmudic studies. Well, this is threatening the right-wing ministers in his coalition. Can Netanyahu survive all these competing pressures? Well, uh, you talked about Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, Andrea. He's a political survivor, if nothing else. Uh, the reality is he's facing pressure from different fronts right now. Uh, I think the families have been very disappointed and angry, understandably, um, that he has not embraced the proposal for a ceasefire that the administration has cast as an Israeli proposal that clearly originated from Israeli negotiators, but Prime Minister Netanyahu himself has not supported it. And the other day, he appeared to walk it back publicly, in which he said he didn't want the kind of comprehensive phased uh, proposal that the U.S. has been pushing. He wanted uh, something smaller that he knows uh, Hamas will not accept. Uh, at the same time, for his political survival, for his coalition to survive, he draws on support from right-wing parties, including ultra-Orthodox parties, that have as their own red line uh, the uh, Israeli government not getting rid of that exception from military service. As you know, Andrea, this has been very polarized in Israeli society for a long time because there's conscription for everybody else. And so uh, most, most people, including uh, most of the centrists that uh, Netanyahu's uh, relied upon, have wanted to get rid of this exception. Uh, the Israeli Supreme Court, which has obviously been at odds with Netanyahu for some time, uh, now siding with, I think, the majority uh, of uh, Israeli society and saying that that exception needs to go. So this is a trying time for Netanyahu. Uh, what he's repeatedly done is turn to his right flank uh, to try to shore up his right flank. Uh, he cannot afford to lose the support of those ultra-Orthodox parties or else the government could collapse and there'll have to be an election. So he's going to be trying to muddle through this, and these different positions are getting harder and harder to reconcile them. And aside from the political threats, there's the military threat from Hezbollah, which is getting increasingly dangerous. They have 150,000-plus missiles. That's a real military. And there's pressure from all the families and the, the political leaders from the north They've been evacuated for 90,000 people. It's a school year approaching. They want to get home. So some of them are advocating for, to take on Hezbollah in the north, which would open up a second front. That's right. And this is something that the Biden administration has been trying to prevent since October 7th. And the reality is that Netanyahu's whole political identity rests on the notion that he's, quote, unquote, Mr. Security. That's his you know, self-described nickname. And that obviously took a huge blow on October 7th, uh, the most deadly terrorist attack in Israel's history. And now I think the challenge for Netanyahu has been the fact that there have been these evacuations of tens of thousands of Israelis pretty much since the days after October 7th. And so the question is rising, well, why can't you secure northern Israel against these Hezbollah rockets? I think the, the way the administration looks at this, though, is if there's a major escalation into Lebanon, Hezbollah is a much, much more powerful force than Hamas. They have a much more significant rocket capability. And if there's an all-out war between Israel and uh, Hezbollah and Lebanon, not only could that be catastrophic for, for Lebanon, which has already gone through a lot, um, it could also kind of let this region even more on fire. Hezbollah obviously has many allies in different parts uh, of the region, Iranian proxies in places like Syria and Iraq. Uh, that earlier in the war, we saw more engaged with U.S. forces, uh, with Israel. So the, the challenge here is preventing this whole thing uh, from, from becoming one big escalation across the region, particularly in, 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 in Lebanon. So you've seen very active diplomacy from the administration to try to tamp this down. And as if that were not enough, there are reports all across Israeli media that Benjamin Netanyahu's wife, Sarah, told the hostage families that the military leadership is trying to carry out a military coup against the prime minister, I guess because of their criticism of his military policies and his uh, maximalist approach to Hamas, which they say is not achievable. But saying that they're trying a military coup against the prime minister, this is the prime minister's very powerful wife. No, and it's just, I mean, it's not the case. The reality is that the Israeli military leadership, including the defense minister, Gallant, who's in Washington, have been public with their concerns. And the concerns articulated by uh, Minister of Defense and others uh, are that there's no clear end game in Gaza. There's no achievable objective. You can't 
eradicate Hamas militarily, when they have political leadership outside the country and they have uh, blended into the population in different parts of Gaza, they've regenerated in parts of Gaza. There's no plan for who will administer Gaza. The U.S. wants the Palestinian Authority to do that. Netanyahu has basically not put forward a plan, and that's what Golan was complaining about. Um, and so I think that the bottom line here is that the root of all of this is the lack of a clear plan from Netanyahu about the future of Gaza. What is the military endgame? What is the military objective? Uh, and that's why I think you see all these kind of building pressures on him. It's in that, that vacuum of a plan. Um, the, the hostage families want the hostages released totally understandably. Uh, the people in the North want to go home. Um, but, but these things cannot be achieved with the ongoing military operation. That's what's creating all this escal escalation risk. Um, and I think that they're not really good answers that we've seen from Netanyahu to date. His focus seems to be on his own kind of political survival and holding enough support to keep his coalition together. That objective is increasingly at odds with the kind of reality on the ground uh, all around. And that's creating this, this variety of tensions that he's dealing with. As you say, he is a survivor politically. Ben Rhodes, thank you so much. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.